What's up everybody, Brian here with BPS Customs and welcome back to my video series, The Best PC You Can Build. Today we're gonna to be taking $800, crumpling it up into a ball, and spitting it out into some computer parts. Let's see what we got. Okay, so if you guys are familiar with my series, The Best PC You Could Build, granted there is only one other episode, which you can find up here, you'll know that what my goal is here is to put together a reasonable and balanced system within a certain price constraint. Now, after last video, I did ask you guys on Twitter what you'd rather see, a more expensive or a cheaper build, and this is what came out on top. I believe the poll question was actually $700 to $800, and what I put together, I was aiming for like $750, and this actually came out to be closer to $800. These parts right here total up to about $780 as of the building of this video, and I didn't wanna mislead people and say this is a $750 build. So I'm gonna go with $800 and we'll stick to that. I know that a lot of people do wanna see budget builds and in the future I'm gonna be working on a couple of projects that are sub $700. So stay tuned for that and get subscribed to the channel if you wanna see those videos. Also, leave a comment down in the video description about what kind of stuff you might wanna see in the future, what kind of build videos I should be working on. Now with all that stuff out of the way, if you guys haven't seen my previous videos and my thoughts on sponsorship, I encourage you to go back and watch the first entry into the series as well as the intro video, which is right here. I talk about how I'm gonna approach sponsorship in these videos and what it means to be sponsored. Now this build is gonna be centered around the i3-6300 processor from Intel. I did a review on this processor and you could find that right up here. Now there are a couple reasons why I went with an i3 in this kind of a build as opposed to maybe say a locked SKU i5 or even like an AMD processor. Now the reason I didn't go with an AMD processor and the reason you're not gonna see AMD processors in any of these builds moving forward until Zen comes out is that I am very much against building on a dead socket. Now the AM3 socket was really good for AMD for a long time, however it is now old, frankly. It doesn't support DDR4, it doesn't support PCIe 3, and it's running on architecture that's five years old at this point. So even on budget builds, I'm gonna be going with Intel processors until AMD releases a new line of chips that really encourages me to move back to that platform. So take a look at the review video on the i3 if you guys want more information about that chip in particular. But basically, it's a fantastic budget gaming chip. It's gonna provide us with great frame rates and not bottleneck our graphics card, which we could get to next, which is the Radeon RX 480. Now this card might look familiar to you guys because I did use it in the first entry of this series for my $1,000 build. I did get a lot of feedback from people on the $1,000 video that said that I should have used a higher end graphics card or even maybe something from Nvidia like the GTX 1060. Nevertheless, it is still a great value. Even this eight gig card that we have here is only $240. It's not really gonna put a big dent into our budget and it leaves us a lot of options for how we wanna do the rest of the system. Both the 6300 and the RX 480 are gonna be sitting in this, the Gigabyte H170N Wi-Fi motherboard. Now, as the name implies, this is an H170 chipset on this motherboard. It is not made for overclocking. There is no ability to change the multiplier in the BIOS. However, we are working with an i3 in this build, which inherently is not overclockable, unless you're talking about the base clock overclocking, which was shut down by Intel. Uh, a couple months ago. Now the H170N Wi-Fi motherboard is gonna be great for our purposes. It has Wi-Fi built in, it has an M.2 slot if we want it, and it also is color neutral, which is something that I look for in every motherboard I use. The memory in this build is an eight gig kit, two by four gigabytes of Crucial Ballistic Sport DDR4. This is 2400 speed memory, and for a budget build like this, it's gonna be perfect. As far as storage goes, you can't really push too far in a budget build, because as you get up into the higher tier SSDs, obviously things get very pricey. But we do wanna put an SSD in this build as we will with almost every build that we do. So we're gonna go with an ADATA 120 gig SSD for the boot drive and a Toshiba one terabyte hard drive for mass storage. Now the Toshiba drive will look familiar. I did use it in a thousand dollar build video. It's basically on par with the Western Digital Blue Drive. It's a one terabyte mass storage drive. There's not really very much to say about it. But as far as the ADATA drive goes, I've used ADATA products in so many builds, I can't even count them right now. And they've always performed fantastic for me. They have really great read and write speeds. And honestly, they're super cheap. This drive was under $40. Now I do wanna give a special shout out to my sponsors for this video in particular, which is Be Quiet and Thermaltake. Now Be Quiet provided us with both the Pure Power 9 600 watt 80 plus silver power supply and the Pure Rock CPU cooler. I did an entire video where I went over some of Be Quiet's new products, and you can find that link in the video description, including a lot of information on their brand new Silent Base 600 case in special edition green. I also did a review video 
of this case. This is the Thermaltake Core X1. Now this case, although it is mini ITX form factor, is quite large. And if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you'll know that I am a big fan of having options when you build a system. Now if you're gonna try to go for a mini ITX form factor, because you want the size to stay as small as possible, to be honest with you, this might not be the case for you. This case is made for expansion, it's made for potential water cooling, it's made to have a lot of room inside for you to do basically whatever you'd like. So if you want tiny, this isn't it. If you want functional and modular, this is a great option. And we're gonna go with this case for this build. So let's get to work on this PC, guys. I'm gonna put it together. We'll show you a few bits and pieces of that build. The time-lapse will be in a separate video because I know you guys probably don't wanna sit through 12 minutes of time-lapse build. And then we're gonna install Windows. We're gonna do some testing. I'm gonna see how this thing performs. Fingers crossed. Let's get to work. All right, so we got the build done yesterday, we got the testing done today. What I wanna do right now is go over the results and see how it compares to our previous build, the $1,000 Best PC. Okay, we can see that the RealBand score definitely suffers when compared to the more expensive system, and this is a direct result of having four physical cores to work with on the i5 versus two physical cores with hyper-threading on the i3. RealBand scores are derived from running workloads that mimic photo and video editing, which inherently is going to be better for the i5. So moving on to PC Mark, we can see that the two scores are much closer than the previous real bench test. The i3 system puts up a very respectable result here, although yes, it still does fall short of the more expensive system. In Firestrike, the $1,000 system does put about a thousand points between itself and this new i3 based system. And that's mainly because the physics portion of the Firestrike test takes full advantage of having a quad core chip as opposed to the i3, which is a dual core. Cinemench R15 scores are similar in that you're going to see a pretty significant difference between an i3 and an i5 when you're just dealing with the CPU portion of the test. We also see our $800 system fall behind in the graphics portion of Cinebench as well. But when we move on to real world gaming performance benchmarking tests, you're going to see that the $800 system really does keep up very well with the more expensive system. In Metro Last Light, we're only 1.2 frames per second behind the $1,000 system, which is basically within the margin of error. But in Unigen Heaven, the scores are almost identical, indicating that yes, gaming performance is very much CPU based in this kind of application. We're gonna see a trend start to develop here very shortly. We see the exact same result in a division with almost identical scores. Rise of the Tomb Raider again shows our $800 system keeping pace with the $1,000 system without any issues. But as we've seen in prior tests, Ashes of the Singularity actually very heavily favors more cores and more threads on your CPU, so we do see a disparity in the Ashes benchmarking score. 
However, this isn't a game that anyone I know really plays, so I'm not particularly worried about it. The $800 system still puts up a very respectable score as this is an enormously taxing benchmark. In addition to all of our graphics benchmarking tests, the Steam VR readiness test also deemed the system VR ready. So for $800, we're gonna put together a gaming box that could run VR and keeps up with a $1,000 build in almost every single real world gaming test. Yes, you're going to miss some of the perks of having an i5, having an unlocked SKU chip, having four physical cores as opposed to two plus two. You're also gonna miss the benefits of having 16 gigs of RAM, but I think this build proves that if you have $800 to spend and you're only going to be gaming, this is a very good option for you. The i3 chip, the RX 480, the eight gigs of RAM, this storage configuration, it all seems to work together very well to produce a fantastic result for a low price. All right, so. Conclusion time. This is a build that I would definitely recommend to anybody looking to spend under a thousand dollars and just game. Productivity might suffer here a bit, but those are the kind of compromises that you make when you spend a little bit less money on a full system configuration. Hey, hey, you, are you subscribed? Get subscribed to the channel. I have a lot of similar content coming up as my release schedule for the next two months is loaded with new builds. Coming very soon, I have a new client build, which is a $2,500 X99 based gaming and video editing system. I also have a very special project I'm working on with EVGA and AlphaCool. And then I have my next best PC build in about a month, which is gonna be a $1,300 all around good stuff box. So leave a like on this video if that was the case, or leave a dislike on this video if you don't like freedom in America. Also feel free to leave me a comment down below letting me know how you'd spend $800 on PC parts. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.